information and this program is supported by Star Ghana with funding from DFID, Danida and the European Union. In our very first story, her wars began some 13 years ago when her last two children were born with abnormal curvature of the bones. She spends her entire day on the children who cannot walk or do anything for themselves. Peter Kwao Adato spent a day with 48-year-old Rebecca Otre and her two children who are struggling to access health care and education. It was about a quarter past seven in the morning of Tuesday, October 17, and the location was at Greek in Zima Abrasu, a suburb of the Ashanti regional capital, Kumasi. In the corner of a semi-completed compound house was 10-year-old Eugene Otre brushing his teeth. His unusual position was not by choice anyway. Eugene was born with abnormal curvature of the bones. All two lower limbs are deformed. In the hall nearby is Eugene's elder brother, 13-year-old Marvin, timidly looking on from his old and obsolete wheelchair. He was born earlier with the worst form of the abnormal curvature of the bones. All four limbs are deformed and weak. He had fallen down days earlier and fractured the left arm, which is only being treated with a balm. Eugene moves towards the bathroom to prepare for school. The cause of Marvin and Eugene's conditions are not known. Soon, two schoolboys appeared on the compound. They are Marvin's classmates who have chosen to help him to and from school. A cursory look through Marvin's books showed an excellent academic performance. Their academic work is par excellence, yet I am unable to support them and provide their needs. My prayer is that society will come to our aid in order that they may continue to stay in school. Prince Nsafwa Yabwa and Jeffrey Pugataba took control of Marvin's obsolete wheelchair. Slowly and carefully, they guided it through hills and valleys to the makeshift school and straight into the junior high Form 1 classroom. <laughs> the head of the school confirmed Marvin's academic wonders. He is very good using the computer, phones, any electronics that is given to him. He's good in drawing. He can create a lot of things that he needs support from other people to help him finish. And if God grace, he can walk, do all things that other people can do. Back in the house, Eugene is ready but has to wait for a taxi because unlike Marvin, he has no wheelchair. And for seven years, this is what Rebecca Autry has been going through as a sole parent to the boys. Their father, Kujotri, had abandoned the family. Sales from these food products is what is used to feed the boys and cater for their needs. But obviously, not enough for health care considerations. So I plead with all Ghanaians to help me take care of the two boys, their school and health care. I am at my wit's end. And Rebecca's only hope for medical attention during a humanitarian medical outreach at the first care hospital was unsuccessful. The condition of Marvin and his brother Eugene can only be addressed outside Ghana according to the medical team. With her hopes dashed, Rebecca and her two challenged children would only have to wait for another humanitarian mission to try their luck. 
uh, unfortunate situation over there. And Eugene and Marvin represent a number of children with special needs and what they go through every day. Let's go to Gas South, where most children with special needs in rural Ghana are often denied their basic rights, especially health and education, while the mission team chronicles the life of Happy and the quest to help her live a normal life in society. She may be called happy, but her name is not a reflection of the condition in which she finds herself. Happy, we were told, has been in the state since birth. She's unable to speak and only responds to gestures from residents. Unfortunately, her parents do not have money to send her to the hospital and to cater for her needs. Her father, who could not stand the shame of having a disabled child, abandoned his family and has not been seen till date. As a child with disability, Happy does not have a right to education and health. The mission team stepped in and decided to have Happy's medical condition diagnosed. <laughs> there was a little challenge as the vehicle to convey Happy to the hospital was not disability friendly. For the first time since birth, the mission team, together with Happy, arrived at the Nsuwam Orthopedic Training Center. Medical examination established that Happy had cerebral palsy. Now she is having knee contractures, the feet are deformed, she is having a wrist drop, and the hip as well. She is also having hip flexion contractures. That's why she is not able to lie on the tummy. If she lies on the tummy, then you see her raise the whole body. We will we, we'll be very grateful if parents could follow up treatment from this time to um, maybe whenever she's ready to walk or be in a wheelchair. The term cerebral palsy refers to a group of disorders that appear in infancy or early childhood and permanently affects the body movements, muscle coordination and balance. In Ghana, persons with disability, especially those with cerebral palsy, continue to face discrimination and difficulties imposed by society in every area of their life. Despite the commitment made by government in its inclusive education policy, children with disabilities are still at risk of stigma, misunderstanding and discrimination, particularly within their local communities. Disability. Farida Bedway is a technology genius. Although diagnosed with cerebral palsy, Farida has defied all odds and serves as an inspiration to all. Happy can be inspired by the story of Farida Bedway, but she's not in school and it may take time for her to enjoy quality of life. The mission team will follow up on Happy's story and progress to ensure her turbulent past will end on a very happy note. We will be grateful if you aid Happy to be wealthy. Porsche Gabo, TV3 News, Accra. There should indeed be a happy ending to her story. Let's now go to the eastern region where the absence of a school facility at Maria Kroom in the Kriapin South District has forced most children in the area of school going age to stay at home. The nearest school has just one classroom block. It was a sunny afternoon when the news team arrived at the village of Maria Kroom in the eastern region. 
Many residents had gone to farm, while few others who had just returned were enjoying the afternoon breeze. The community has been in existence for more than 30 years. It currently has a population of about 2,000. Education in this part of the eastern region is hiccuping as most children of school-going age stay home due to absence of a school. The nearest educational facility is located at Janwa, about four miles from Maria Kroon. It is just a shed, but accommodates pupils in KG 1 and 2, class 1, 2, 3 and 4, with three pupil teachers. The school has fewer desks and teaching aids. Class 4 is the end point for most pupils here. We have been compelled to put all the pupils in one classroom because of lack of facilities. Our appeal to the community to support us build an additional classroom has not been fruitful. Dreams of children as Maria Krum, who cannot trek long distance to Janwa, appear to be shattered. 37 year old Joyce Ahiame has four children, but three have dropped out of school because her family is unable to meet the educational needs. She said her cooked beans business, which the family depends on, is irregular. Our children have been staying at home because their father is financially handicapped. We depend on our small farm for survival. Chief of Maria Krum, Kwame Dovu, is worried about the impact of lack of education on the community. He appealed to authorities to provide social amenities for poverty reduction. We have made land available for construction of a school. We will also support the project with a communal labor. Access to health care is also a challenge negatively impacting on children and the aged. Sustainable Development Goal 3 and 4 promotes access to quality education and health for all by 2030. For Maria Krum to meet the United Nations set targets, duty bearers must channel resources into addressing their education and health needs. That's it for today's edition of Mission. This program is supported by Star Ghana with funding from DFID, Danida and the European Union. Thanks so